Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. Back again. Got my boy Justin here. What's up, dude? What is going on? Thank you talking about me. what makes a great angler, what makes an angler great. Um, greatness in general, you know, does not come easy. Uh, our whole team here at Salt Strong is, is reading a, a book called The 12 Week Year. And, you know, in that book, they talk about what it takes to be great. And, uh, and I know you, you're fresh off reading it, Justin. I think that's, you know, kind of what spurred this conversation. And it talks about even, you know, Michael Phelps, right? We all consider him, uh, you know, to, to be great. But, you know, the book was saying he, he's, we all look at him as great now because he's won all these medals, but he chose to be great way before he even went to his first Olympics, right? It, it's, it's a choice. He didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm, I'm kind of built for this. Maybe, maybe I'll go to the Olympics next year. I mean, this was years and years of, of training and years and years of self-control, right? Not to go, uh, you know, eat like crazy and get overweight and stuff and, and just to show up every morning. I mean, you swim, you swim it every day, all year long. And sometimes it is cold. And some days I know even Tony worked at the YMCA in Orlando. He said, there's years and that was an outside pool. It, you know, we got 38, 40 degrees and dudes still up there swimming. I mean, and you know, in wetsuits. And that takes a lot of dedication. Uh, there's a, a lot that goes into being great. And I think a lot of anglers, they say they want to be great. I, I do. And, and yet we also kind of take, you know, some shortcuts or, and, or just assume, Hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get one lure or one new rod and reel or one, my first boat. And all of a sudden I'm going to be great. And, and that's normally not the case. So uh, I'd love for you to kind of, you know, kick it off. Cause this is really a, uh, really kind of something that you brought up. And uh, and talk about you know how this uh, how this came about on your end. Yeah, man. So this is I mean I think it's kind of personal for me. Um, you know, in in reading that book that we're talking about the the twelve week year, and in light of a uh, an email that we got from one of our members, Mr. Denny Pendergrass. If you're if you're watching this, this is a big shout out to you, man. Uh, for the holiday weekend for Thanksgiving, he sent me an email. And it was a uh, it was a YouTube video of uh, professional bass angler Randy Blockett. Forgive me if I've mispronounced your last name. He has been a veteran bass competitive angler in FLW series and BASS. He's won over a million dollars in tournament earnings, and he's just been around for a long time. And on his YouTube channel, he he wanted to have kind of a mental Monday, if you will. And the conversation went into talking about good anglers and great anglers. And one aspect of that video was awareness and saying that picking up and being aware of all the little things is, is something that he thinks separates one angler from another. Like the anglers that are on the boat that are always talking or asking questions might not be the anglers that are, that are super laser focused in the mo in the moment of, of their casts of how they're working their lure of listening to sounds of where did that mullet jump? And what did that sound like a fish bust or are there birds working over there? You know, that's that active awareness aspect that, that, you know, those fishermen go from the casual anglers to the diehard laser focused anglers. So that conversation of awareness was, was interesting to me. You know, he gave another example of, uh, uh, you know, talking about, Hey, if you're throwing a crankbait and you catch a bass, there's a lot of anglers that will like get the bass and unhook the crankbait and let the bass go. But those borderline great anglers or the more aware anglers are the ones that are looking at how that hook got the bass, like where on the, on the mouth or the side of the cheek or wherever did that fish get hooked so that you can better assess of how are these fish striking? How are they behaving in that moment? It's those little details that you start to appreciate and relish. And that got me thinking, you know, I really enjoyed listening to that video. And I, I in reading this book and in finishing the book, I realized the concept or the, the conversation of what does great actually mean? And, and from the book, what it kind of defined it as is the moment in which you're willing to accept that you will do whatever is necessary in order to be successful or accomplish the task at hand. It's in those, it's in that moment, that inception that you decide 
to do whatever is necessary that greatness actually happens for someone. Um, and then all the awards, all the accolades for Michael Phelps, all the gold medals, that's just the public affirmation of, of greatness incarnate. Like that is just the proof that it's happened. But the moment that it actually occurs is that, that decision and the action of taking the steps to regiment your diet and to always go do your laps and to, you know, to plan and structure your day. It's that moment that you decide to do it, that really you're kind of opening the doors into what greatness is. Um, and I kind of wanted to bring it all and focus it back onto fishing. And as, as anglers, you know, this is, this is really interesting to me. Um, you know, my progression a, as a fisherman, and I'm sure some people have had similar experiences. Everybody's at a different arc of where they are as anglers and their angling career, even if it doesn't, you know, involve earnings or tournament or, or achievements or whatnot, whether you started fishing at seven, all the way to your late sixties and seventies, or you've only been fishing for a couple months, everybody has kind of an arc of what I think they go through in, in their angling career. And for me, you know, it, being a social media angler and, and, and what I, what I mean by that is it's very present in our lives, you know, through the 2000s, things like there's MySpace and Facebook and YouTube and things. And, MySpace. and through, <laughs> yeah, MySpace, there's Zanga. Oh, Zanga was before all that. But um, there's so many platforms. And I grew up with that through my 20s. And, you know, I really got into saltwater fishing in my late teens. Like I've been fishing bass ponds, you know, in Florida my whole life as a kid. But when I had the chance to really get a kayak and explore, I was, uh, you know, I was heading over to the coast and, and learning the saltwater world. And my progression over a period of, let's say, 10 years or, or more went from learning a lot of things from other people and networking through different forums to competing in tournaments, not doing so well, to competing in tournaments and winning and winning and winning and then going to Amsterdam and competing internationally to doing an offshore tournament for the first time ever and getting first place to just just so many things, catching the biggest of all these different species and logging it. And all of that's wonderful and fantastic. And when I was in my mid-20s, I felt that that was a moment of greatness. Like, wow, I I made it or I'm great. Or I felt that that exemplified you know, what I had accomplished helped define that aspect of being great. And it wasn't until, I, I guess, recently or even years after that, that I realized greatness isn't defined by what you accomplish. It's not a, it's not a like title that you earn. It's kind of a, a lifestyle. It's something you're always working to be better from. So, you know, now, and I'm sure many of you anglers that have been fishing for a long time, guides are a great example of this where you kind of get to a point where you've caught a lot of fish and you've caught a lot of big fish, or maybe you've won tournaments, or maybe you've, you know, fished crazy destinations and have had lifelong, you know, trips that you've accomplished. That's all awesome. We kind of get to a point where it's more fulfilling and that path towards greatness is sharing that with other people, you know, sharing that success and those experiences and helping others fought, you know, have those moments of growth that that's more rewarding. And, and that moves you cl closer towards your view of what greatness is. Um, so I kind of argue that in some ways, greatness happens in the moment that you decide to do whatever is necessary to be successful. You're kind of always working towards that. It's not a title or a moment of accomplishment. It's, it's fluid. Like it's always changing. And, and what you're working towards that, that dedication to working towards something is the definition of what greatness is. Yep. I, I love it. <clears throat> and I know Luke would agree. You know, he, he started off like a lot of us in that, that cycle where in the beginning you just, you, you're learning and right. You're listening, you're reading magazines, watching YouTube, whatever it is you do, hopefully joining the insider club and learning from there. And, and you're just, you're just trying to become a little bit more consistent. And, and then kind of the next phase as a fisherman is you just trying to go out and catch as many fish as you can. It, it is uh, many times about, you know, you've got some kind of trophies behind you, big checks. It's, it is about how much can I accomplish, right? I mean, for most of us, whether you're entering, entering tournaments or just loading up your phone with, with fish picks, uh, th there is part of that, that our ego is just, we're, we're driven that way. We want to, we want to be able to say we did some great things. And then kind of that next phase is you see a lot of guides do, and a lot of guides exemplify this, and and some of the old timers, AK, like you know, guys like Bill Dance and, and Flip Pallet and stuff, then it, it reverts into teaching, right? Is hey, 
I'm not going to be here forever. Uh, I want to share all these great things I've learned with other people. I mean, it, it, in many movies follow the same type of format, right? You know, you usually have a Yoda, if you will, someone who's older and has been there, done that. Even some of the funny movies, what was the one uh, dodgeball dodge dip? Remember it's the old guy oh who's gosh. like, matches a hula hand. hand. <laughs> who's, you know, the, the best dodgeball player of all time. There, there's it, th- this, there's a reason movies always have that kind of, that old person or the father, mother, grandmother, whoever, someone who's, who's already kind of accomplished that and acts kind of as a, as a guide to help, you know, the next generation, the next person accomplish something probably even bigger, which, which usually happens, right? I mean, look at the tournaments. You usually, you know, people are doing more and more extreme and, and, and amazing things and breaking, uh, breaking new records. And I know Luke would say if he was here on this, that he, he became better and, and probably, uh, it exuded more greatness when he started sharing. I think in kind of that middle phase where you're just trying to catch and, and kind of have as many trophies as possible, you, you don't share as much. You're like, well, those are my spots. And you see people doing it. You, you know who's great. Yeah. Like the great people don't have to do that. They don't have to hide every spot and black out and, or whatever, you know, uh, fade out everything in the background. It's many times it's younger people doing that or people who finally found their first good spot. Like they don't want to give it up. Whereas my brother, Luke, I mean, this is a big part of our club. I mean, he said, you know, I'm going to share every single spot that I fish in. I mean, he literally holds nothing back and he keeps catching more and more fish. And, and the irony is a lot of people would think, man, if I gave up all my, all my spots and, and showed people where I was fishing, I'd, I, I would just be over overflown and over overgrown with, uh, with, with people. And I never catch fish there again. And, and just the opposite has happened. One, I, I don't know. It goes back to even just a biblical principle about, about the power of giving. And I mean, God literally calls us and challenges us to try to outgive him. Like, and people say, man, you can't really out, out give God and, 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 and how much you share ties in with all that. And uh, I don't know it's been really, really neat watching Luke, especially who, you know, did win, you know, tournaments and did some pretty cool stuff. And now is just giving, and now he's the greatest I've ever seen him and, and probably the most consistent at, uh, at catching fish. It's been really neat kind of, uh, you know, kind of seeing that transpire. Yeah. It's rewarding on a, on a completely different level. You know, we look at it from a fulfillment standpoint and giving back is a huge legacy aspect of fishing. And I'm sure many of you out there, you've you've said at one point in time, or maybe you have the privilege right now to be able to give back and, and have kids of your own to teach them the things that you've learned. I mean, that that passing on is a tradition that's been happening for many, many years. And and with us here at Salt Strong and in the community, that is that is that concept on a much, much bigger scale, you know, because of the ability to say, it's not just about passing it to your son or daughter. It's about passing it to friends and family and people you've never met. I mean, that, that outreach to help people be better is a huge mission about what we talk about all the time. And a a lot of that, and, and the whole point of this call is that it's kind of a moment to take a beat and, and realize and acknowledge that, That as anglers, as we aspire to be better, hone our skills, find more fish, catch more fish, regardless of where you're at on this arc, we've kind of noticed that it is an arc. You know, you get to a point where people want to share, you know, people want to help others be better. And I think that's where you and I are at, Joe. I think that's definitely where Luke's at and a lot of our coaches and, um, and it's in these moments we take a beat and we look at exactly how we got to that point that we kind of realize like it's a similar trend for so many other people out there that have been fishing for such a long period of time. And, and it's, it's very fulfilling, you know, like that's the next step. It was fulfilling to check this, this, this off the bucket list. And I caught this, I caught this many, I competed in this. And now it's, I just want to help as many people as I possibly can while I'm here. I mean, that's the huge mission that we're all laser focused on and, and knowing that that's going to take, an indeterminate amount of time. I mean, it's it's ever growing. We're never going to get to a point where we say we taught everybody and, and we taught everything. And that's kind of the beauty of it because then you're always working towards something great. Um, and it's just it was it's just really amazing. Yep. I remember I was on uh, April Vokey's podcast and and we were talking a little bit kind of about about this. Not necessarily the word greatness, but uh, you know just how important it is. To, to teach and to share and to make sure that we have future anglers 
uh, you know, one, to keep supporting all the amazing stuff that we're able to do. And two, the conservation side of things. Um, and, and she kind of asked a question, like, how, how important is it to you that, you know, we're impacting and, and reaching all these people? And, and I remember telling her, I was like, listen, I was like, I, I believe in it so much. Like, it, I, I would actually stop fishing. Like, I, I would quit fishing if I knew that I, it would be guaranteed that a million people would, would you know, possibly become great and be able to share with their kids like this. You know, that, I mean, what, wouldn't that be awesome, right? If And, and would you? I mean, it's a tough call because I love fishing so much. But like someone said, all right, Justin, if you could stop fishing today and a million people are going to be impacted for the rest of their life and their kid's life, and their grandkid's life, it's going to have one of the biggest impacts on fishing ever if you give up fishing. And it's like, man, uh, and I, I, I said, yes, I, I mean, I, I haven't done that because I'm still fishing every week, but uh, I don't know. It's just something it's, it's interesting to think about. And, and, and that does tie into what I call kind of the two C's of greatness. And one is that conservation. The other thing that you see happening with a lot of the people who have, who have become great, like the flip pallets. I mean, they're very in to the conservation, right? I mean, the, it, that's, it's conservation and, and education, sharing what they know with uh, others. But the other part is just making sure that we don't ruin everything that, that, that we have, right? Let's, let's, let's stop building skyscrapers on, you know, places that we should probably be conserving, and, uh, and, and, and the water issues that, you know, that not just Florida is dealing with, but the, the whole country really is, uh, with just overpopulation and, and, and all kinds of different pollution spills and things like that. So I think the conservation is, a, is a huge part of it. And you start thinking more about conservation than, you know, just catching, catching fish every single time. Uh, it, it's interesting watching that shift happen. I see it happen with a lot of our members, right? When we first started, no one was even talking about conservation. Like the, in the very beginning of the club, it was all about catching fish, catching fish. And now we've got some of these members who have been around for a while and, and they've become really good, like great anglers. And now, I mean, we hear about it every day. People are talking about conservation, which is really cool. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a big like paradigm shift when you realize that a lot of the things that you do as an angler, yeah, a lot of this is not about you particularly. It's not about you specifically. It's about what you can be doing to make a bigger impact. So conservation is definitely a part of that. I, I had mentioned to you in the past when I was in college, uh, around that 2009, 2010 time period, you know, there, there was a massive freeze that we had here in Florida. Uh, a little over 10 years ago, that freeze was so, it, it was so intense here in Florida that FWC had reported that nearly 60% of the snook population in Florida had been decimated from that, from that freeze. I was in college at the time, um, and it was in one of my fisheries and aquatic science classes that, that I actually created a mock grant proposal to NOAA to implement artificial means of heating at key passes and inlets at Florida to provide kind of a safe haven for snook and other temperate species that can't avoid the cold um, to help the population rebuild. I mean, I was moved by the thought that I had ha I've had the opportunity to catch 40 inch snook and it's an amazing experience and a memory that I, I, I cherish. And I, and I thought in that moment, what can I be doing to be a part of the solution so that 20, 30, 40 years from now, the, the next generation of anglers can enjoy the things that I was able to enjoy. I mean, that was moving to me to where I wanted to take action and find ways to be a part of the solution to help that resource be available to others. I mean, that's that's a huge aspect of giving back. And that's that's kind of where I, I'm at mentally is, is realizing that all of this aspect of, of pursuit of greatness it is not about me personally. It's about a bigger message. So, I mean, to answer your question, Joe, if I was asked right now to be the deciding factor as to, okay, if you continue fishing, things will continue as the way they are. But if you stop fishing today, your impact the very next day would would bring a million new anglers into the sport of fishing and love it and continue with that that tradition of learning, growing, and sharing. I would hang up. I would sell all my rods. I would hang it all up, and I, I would stop today. I mean that 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 message, and to know that I would have that amount of an impact would. I mean. What do I do next? I go play golf. Like, I don't know what I, you know, I have to figure something else out to, to now like grow and start on a new journey and a new endeavor. Well, that's awesome. Uh, the good news is we're not asking anyone to quit fishing. If anything, uh, you make more of an impact by fishing. And, 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 and that's, I, I we use that as analogy because that is yeah. part of our, 
our five year, you know, mission statement is, is to impact a million people. And then that doesn't mean like a million people watching our videos. We've already done that. I think we've got, I don't know, was it some crazy, like 40 million, you know, oh, yeah. uh, video views just, just on YouTube side. So we are, we, we have 3 million people a year come to saltstorm.com. So we've done all that, but it, you know, it, it's one thing to have someone watch a video. It's another one to like truly impact them to become one of our clients, right? Someone who is literally using what we're talking about and getting inside of our community, going through our mastery courses, and many times going out fishing with us or coming to events like the one we have coming up in January. And and we want to have an impact with a million people like that, like a personal interaction slash impact. And one way we can do it is to continue to keep fishing and becoming better and striving for greatness. I, I'm certainly not there. And uh, there's a lot of things I still want to do in my fishing uh, career, if you will. But I, but I have seen it shift. And I more importantly, I've seen it shift with a lot of our, our members. And I, I think that part is cool. And then the other, the other C is community. I didn't really finish. Number one is conservation. The other one is community. And I, I feel like when you're in that, I'm going to call it the young gun stage, regardless if you actually are young or, you know, if you're just picking up, you know, fishing at 70 years old, it's in that beginning stage when you're finally catching fish. And it's kind of like, you know, kind of about me, me, me and hiding your spots and not, not being able to share as much just because you're, you're newer to it. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a whole lot tougher to be thinking about, you know, community. Cause it, it, like, once again, you're kind of like the one man team and then some kind of shifts and, and I, I, it's different for everyone. Everyone has a different fishing journey, but that community part has been so, so, so impactful. And, and the older I get and the more I see the power of community, I mean, we kind of wrote that thing off and it was, it was really interesting uh, I'll share with you guys uh, something that happened a little while back. We had some investors who wanted to invest in, in SaltStrong. And we've had a bunch of them over the years, but this is the only one that really got so, even close to the finish line. And we, we did tell them no. But at the end, after you know we went through like six months of due diligence and they put a valuation on our company and, and all that, and they kind of got to just see everything behind the scenes. And uh, we told them no. And the reason was even though it was a pretty fair valuation, you know, they, they wanted to be out in five to seven years. And Luke and I want to do this for the rest of our lives. I mean, it's, it's our, this is our way of trying to become great in the fishing world and impact millions of people. So like, this is something that we wake up excited about. And until that day happens where we wake up, not excited about it, we're going to keep doing this forever, which is hopefully, you know, another 20, 30 years. But anywho, at the very end, after we told them, no, you know, they said, guys, let me just give you some good feedback so you don't ever lose your way. The the one thing that you have, you know, in in all of Salt Strong, like the most powerful thing, the thing that we wanted to invest in is your community. And it kind of we're like, really? Um, they're like, that's 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 what's special. It's like you can't just wake up one day and say, I'm gonna create a community. Like that that takes what you guys have done is taken years and you have a special community where people are positive, they're sharing, they're helpful, there's no cursing there, there's no belittling. Like it's it is one of the hardest things in the world to create a tight-knit community like that. It's easy to go create a lure, right? It, I mean, it's easy to create a lot of just products and sell them online. So the toughest part is creating a long lasting, tight knit family like community. And you guys have it. Don't forget that. That is your asset. That's the most powerful part of Salt Strong. And I was like, dang. And, and ever since then, we haven't forgotten that, which has been good. Uh, we invest heavily in that community. You got a lot of really cool changes coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but it has been neat seeing how many of our great anglers, right? We have a lot of them in the community now. I mean, they're they're sharing and they're becoming better because they're sharing. Uh, it, it goes back to that principle in the, the Bible I told you earlier. It's It's wild. The more I'm seeing people share, the more fish they keep catching in, in brand new areas they haven't even fished before. So oh, it's been really fascinating, you know, seeing that uh, that community side grow as well. Yeah, man, you know, uh, nostalgia is a, is a heck of a drug. And for me, I want to ask you in those moments, you've caught you've caught massive snook with Peter Deeks, for example. And while that was a huge thing for you and Luke to go do, get those massive snook. What are you really going to remember from all that? You're going to remember fishing with your brother, fishing with Peter Deeks. You're going to remember some things you guys laughed about. You're going to remember conditions in the day. And it's those memories that like will stick with you. And then you have that urge to want to recreate that. And um, on the note of community, 
I've made, I showed Wyatt when he came over here, uh, you know, we had our, our team Christmas party and got to spend some time together and plan for the next year. And, and I told him about a book that I made uh, growing up and, and fishing on the Space Coast in Brevard County on the East Coast. And I remember just very vividly having moments where I'll go fish for a day and I'll come to a local tackle shop. And before I know it, five hours have passed. We got pizzas and Cokes and we're telling stories and talking about life and religion and love. And, and that that was a height of community for me. It was it was I always wanted to find ways to recreate that moment. Even if I went out and I caught a little 20 inch redfish, I could have gone out and caught a 40 inch redfish that day or the biggest redfish in my life. Nothing is going to trump that moment, that very vivid moment where I would sit in a tackle shop and talk with some other great anglers, just wonderful people and share memories and experiences. I made an entire Shutterfly book that captured 40 different stories from 40 individuals called Tales from the Space Coast. And I gave it to five local businesses in Brevard County so that when people would come in, they'd read through that book and say, wow, I'm right there with that person in that story of what they've accomplished. And it just, it continues to build that community in, in that area. So, you know, that's, that's huge. I think that a lot of people would argue that the things they remember most aren't, yeah, sure. You'll remember the biggest catch and, and all the things that went along with it. But the, when you have those moments to do it with somebody else, one other person, two, three, five other people, a whole weekend trip, a whole getaway, it's those experiences that are memorable and you want to share and recreate that as much as you can. Um, so community is huge. I mean, that, that's a core of, of everything we do. Yep, that's awesome. Um, and I, I'd love to hear everyone else's feedback if you're still with this, because this was um, not, not a sermon. It was just something that came up and Justin brought it up. I was like, man, we should definitely do a podcast on this um, because it gets all of us thinking too, right? What does make a great angler? And I, and there's probably some people hearing this that, that are, are living that out. And, and, and one have, what did you say in the beginning? It's when you decide you make a, a, a choice and, and then back it up by action to become yeah. great. And that, and that takes, that takes, I mean, it definitely takes some time on the water. It takes studying, it uh, it takes asking good questions, and then and then it does evolve into that that sharing piece of it. And um and and so I would encourage you if if you are getting closer to becoming great, you know, share share more. Get in a great community like the Salt Strong Insider Club. If you don't get help from us, please get help somewhere. <laughs> Old charter commercial, uh, but you know what I mean. I mean that that's such a massive massive part of it. Uh, it, regardless of your age, you could be 20 years old and have a ton of knowledge because you've been fishing since you're four and being able to, to share some of that with, uh, with others. I can't, I can't imagine what this would have done for me if I had found this at, at 21. Yeah. I mean, like all the things that I'm realizing very fortunately in, in my early thirties okay. to have that moment of that bigger, that bigger purpose and message and what you're growing towards, or at least catching more fish in a shorter period of time, catching bigger fish. I, I grinded and struggled and having that community and that resource of people to build me up and help me be better would have saved years and, and a lot of frustration, um, which I, I love the journey that I had, but if I could go back and do it again and having, if having had the insider community or have this type of platform, I do it in a heartbeat. You know, yeah. I just, I think letting people know that it's out there and that it's available is the biggest thing. Yeah, and we're going to be doing probably a couple different promotions next year in, in 2022, really targeting those, you know, 20 year olds, uh, especially people who are in, in college. There's, and we've heard from some, we, we have, we actually have a decent amount of members who, you know, are in their, their young 20s. And, uh, and, and they've said the same thing. There's just not really a place. I mean, most of their friends are on Instagram and they're, blacking out the, the their pictures. They don't want anyone to know their spots. They said, it's just, it's been tough to learn. And when they see our community, like, wow, like people are in here actually sharing and they're positive. I can ask a question and not getting made fun of. They're actually giving me helpful advice. And sometimes even like taking time to go to Google and do screenshots with arrows on and on places to fish. I mean, it's incredibly helpful when you have a community like that. I mean, it can cut out years of trial and error. It could literally like it help you leapfrog uh, all of your friends. So we're going to make a big push to to get some more twenty year olds uh, in there, uh, even if they're not adding value in terms of of sharing. Just you know, just for us to be able to share with them, you, you just like a church or anything, you have to have young younger generations, some younger blood in there to to you know to to grow and uh, and 
and to grow for the long term. So uh, I know that's going to be something we're going to be doing uh, doing next year for sure. Um, what else? What what else uh, defines greatness in your eyes? What what are some other uh, other thoughts that you had? Man, we we covered so much. I I think a lot of this is a stream of consciousness where as we say a lot of these things and we have a chance to like vocalize all of it, we realize stuff for ourselves. You know, at the beginning of this call, my my thought was if we had to define it, greatness is that moment that you decide that you pass through that that door of being prepared to do whatever that is. Like a, like someone deciding, I want to be a fishing captain. When you decide to do that, it is embarking on a path of greatness. But but I think we we've kind of learned in this call that regardless of what you end up doing, you know, we're talking about what what makes a great angler. And I hope that this video, this podcast helps define some of those things that that encompass what it means to be a great angler. But the conversation is about greatness in general, whether you're in a swimmer or professional golfer or or anything, you know, it, it's it's knowing what you're willing to to do, taking that next step, planning ahead, initiating, building a community, helping it grow, sharing it with others. I mean, it's like a it's a recipe for success long term. And 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 fulfillment in a, in a bigger bigger scheme um and i don't know that we fully thought about that at the beginning of this call this is just kind of morphed into that bigger you know conversation but for me i realized from all of this now that it isn't just about you know defining greatness it's it's acknowledging that we're always doing it and we're always getting better and we're always doing something new and different um and that keeps it fresh i'm all i don't know if you're, if you're like me guys and you're always out trying to find the next new thing i mean i it's going to sound so silly, but there was a TV show uh, that I watched growing up as a kid called The Next Fight. And it was like a bunch of walleye and and, uh, and pike guys up north. I can't remember all their names. I had a little catchy jingle. But the concept was like, what's next? What's the next species I'm going to target? The next situation, the next place I'm going to go? You're always moving towards something new. And it's kind of great to know that I'm always trying to figure out what more can I learn so that I can share more with others. And that never ends to the point where I'll, I'll be saying like, I'm going to learn how to fly fish for the smallest fish on the planet, but that's going to be rewarding when I can do it and I can share it with somebody else. Like it's, it's never going to stop. I love it. That's probably why you're a better angler than me. You're greater. Uh, you were watching legit fishing uh, TV shows and I was watching fishing with John. Have you ever seen that show? What? No. What is oh that? my! Are you serious? Yeah. What? What is All that? All right. Uh, well, we'll have to put a link to it. And I'll, I'll I'll send you one of the many great episodes. It was a guy who I guess was kind of like a, a B list celebrity who who really liked fishing but was not good at it at all. <laughs> so he he somehow convinced some producer to do a TV show where he would take out uh, celebrities, uh, some pretty big names now. Uh, and they would just go on random fishing trips and sometimes not catch a single fish. And yeah, it, the, it reminded me because it was the worst jingle ever, but it was so bad. You wanted to keep watching. It was almost like reality TV and oh, was no. fishing with John. It, just wait till you see the beginning. For I'm, those already, of you listening, I'm, I'm we'll, uncomfortable thinking about it. We'll, now, we'll like... put it in the, in the show notes. Uh, I watched a lot of those episodes. <laughs> this says a lot about you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, it really does. So, anyhow, don't uh, don't follow my path. Follow uh, Justin's. But uh, I do hope this is helpful. We we we'd love to hear your feedback on what you think makes a great angler. I'm not talking about greatest of all time. I think a lot of people hear that. And, oh, I, I you know, no, we're not talking about goats. We're talking about just great, right? And it could be anyone. It could be just the granddad who happens to be taken you know, uh, kids or neighbors out, you know, at once a quarter, uh, that's, that's greatness to be able to go share your love of fishing with other people. I mean, you, you, that, that is greatness. That's a form of greatness for sure. It means you're doing a great job. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear your feedback in the, in the comments and, you know, the, the beauty of it too, is, I mean, what we've been building in the insider club is, is kind of the ingredients to become great, not the greatest of all time. It, you could, but I mean, it's to become great, right? I mean, guys like Tony and uh, and and Wyatt. I mean, you were in a different level because you were already doing some pretty big stuff. But those are two guys that that had never really caught inshore fish before they joined the club, and now are considered 
I mean, great anglers. And all they did was they went through the courses and they would go apply stuff and they would come in and ask questions and then they'd go apply a little bit more. And then they come in the community and ask more questions and share a few things. And, and over time, th those repetitions, right. Of, and they weren't fishing every day or even every week. I mean, th th these were weekend warriors, why they were going through this stuff. I think why in the beginning was, you know, only getting to fish, you know, a couple of times a month, but he was studying everything he possibly could in pre-trip planning like based on what he learned in the insider club, right. And going through like the mastery course, like the finding spots mastery. And then as soon as he had the opportunity to hit the water, he was applying everything he could. And he started leapfrogging a lot of his friends that, that had fished for, for many years and, and thought as wide as, is kind of a newbie and same with Tony. I mean, Tony had never caught anything but a catfish and all of a sudden starts like out fishing all his friends who, who had been fishing. Like, dude, what happened to you? Like, I just, I joined this insider club and actually like, I had to go. It wasn't easy, right? You don't just yeah. sign up and all of a sudden you got 30 years of knowledge. You have to still watch some of the videos and go through some courses and then apply it. But they've also proven it, it doesn't take that long to really yeah. reach levels of, of greatness. Uh, I mean, yeah. that, to me, that's amazing what they've done in a really short amount of time. Yeah, man. So, I mean, like I said, I, I didn't have this 10 years ago and, and I put in so much time and effort. I was prepared to do whatever, just like Wyatt, to do all the pre- pre-trip planning and all the research and then apply it, but to do it on, in this method where you're still putting in the effort and the work, but it's a, a fraction of what I did, you can achieve these things in such a shorter period of time and have that moment of like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to go next. Cause I thought this was going to take me five or 10 years. And now within a year, potentially, or even a couple months, you've accomplished more than you even thought you could. I mean, that's like, that's just big every time I think about it. And Wyatt and Tony are perfect examples. They 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 were ready to, to grit their teeth and buckle down. And then now they look back on it. It's like you blink and years go by and you're like, I never imagined I'd get to this spot, you yeah. know? And, and guess what they're doing now? Now they're teaching and sharing with others and they're yeah. in the active in the community. So it, it is really cool. Well, buddy, this was a, this was a good one. I'm, I'm glad you came up with this idea. It, it definitely gets us uh, thinking, especially here, new, new year. Like, you know, what, what are your goals? Like, right. Um, uh, I, that was something that I never did until we started salt strong. I was like, what are our goals? Not just, I'm not talking like goals financially. Or anything. I'm talking about what are the fishing goals, right? Is, is it to catch yeah. your first inch or slam? Is it to catch uh, your first 40 inch snook or 40 inch or 50 inch redfish? Uh, what are your goals? And it, anytime you have goals and you write them down, we used to talk about this a lot. We need to get back to it. Uh, it is so powerful. Right. And and yet and most of us know that in the business setting, if you've taken business courses or, you know, you're in a, a company that gives some, uh, you know, any type of education. A lot of times we'll talk about writing your goals down. Right. What, what are your goals for this year? We're doing it with our 12 week year. But, hey, why not apply the same thing to your fishing? Right. If your goal is to get better or, or even if you just to fish a certain amount of, of time uh, per year, write that stuff down. It, it makes it a whole lot easier Right. You can't measure something if you haven't even written out what what you're what what what's what's the end? What's the score supposed to look like at the end of the year? So I would uh, highly encourage you to write your goals down as well and uh, and then help let us help you get there. We'd love to help you at saltstrong.com. Once again, whether you get help from us or not, get help somewhere. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> All right, buddy. That was uh good. You guys definitely leave some comments below on on what you think it means to be a great angler. What does it take to be a great angler and things that you've learned along the way. We, we'd love to hear from this is a definitely a discussion and a, not a lecture, especially when you get two knuckleheads like us. So. Keep it real. Up. Boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Fishing with John. <laughs> <laughs> Cause fishing, it's in my